Hey everybody, it's Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. We're going to talk about our winter weather chances for the weekend. I've been posting sporadically about it, but the reason not too much because a lot of uncertainty in this system. Things are coming a little bit clearer that we at least have a chance, but I'll be honest with you, the chances don't look overwhelming. It just looks like the possibilities. But I want to start with what's happening right now. If you're going skiing this weekend, by the way, great weekend to go to the mountain skiing. We've got great northwest flow, cold temperatures, big flip back to pattern. We've had this record warm start to January now. It's like back to reality. Now, where is the system I'm tracking? Well, it's pretty far to the northwest. It's actually way up here. This is going to be Friday night and Saturday system. This will be another surge of cold air and some northwest flow snow. But really the storm that we're watching, at least the northern branch, is way up there. And I'm looping this, but I'll pause it here. And you can see there's three systems in the pipeline coming down from the northwest in this trough. By the way, let's like look at the temperatures because it is brutally cold. Those were the dew points. Really cold air. I mean, temperatures in the teens, 20s, and 30s, so a cold day, even colder air on the way. You can see it building up in Canada. That's going to be heading our way going into the weekend. So let's look at this. This is the uh, what we call the 500 millibar chart. And you can see the dip in the jet stream here. And we've got another big Big dip coming in this weekend with the system bringing the storm. What's happening is the reason there's so much uncertainty, and this is why the southeast has trouble with snowstorms, is we sometimes have the two branches of the jet stream working independently of each other. When we want a big storm, we want them to work together. So you see the dip in the jet stream. I mean, this is a cold pattern, folks. That is cold air. And if you're ever wondering, for cold air on the east coast, you want the cold air in Canada to eventually be over eastern Canada. This is a much better setup for cold air coming into the Carolinas. Look at the mega ridge out west. That's where I am at now in Tahoe skiing. Snow on the ground, but it is warm out here. It is super warm and dry with sunny skies. East Coast is getting all the cold air and snow. And you can see this cold air is going to stick around in eastern Canada and the eastern U.S. well into next week. It does flatten out a little bit, but overall, this is a very winter-like pattern going into the weekend. So why all the concerns? So don't worry about what this chart means. This is, just so you know, I'll be transparent, European model. Um, I'm showing it here because it's got the divergent pattern from the crazy GFS, which everyone shows you the GFS because they love snow and they love clicks. The problem is you got to look at all the guidance, folks. So we've got two systems coming down, one in the northern branch, one in the southern branch. And if you put these together, we'll go through the weekend. This is Saturday. Again, this is our second surge in northwest flow snow. If you look carefully, we've got this big dip coming down. The southern piece of energy is down here, um, right in this area. It's coming over the ridge and going down this way. There's a northern branch piece up in here um, trying to sync up with this trough. We want them to be together. If you want to see big snows in the southeast, you typically need these two to sync up. And if you look carefully, they're separated here. This is why the European model is much more subdued and why sometimes the you don't see much until you get to the coast. And the reason is that's when the two systems kind of get close enough together to cause maybe a little bit of snow. Right there is where you start to see maybe the coast. But you can see the dip in the jet stream and all that vorticity. That's a very winter-like pattern for the East Coast. So I expect there will be a ton of snow in areas of West Virginia, Virginia, maybe up into Maryland. So if we look at the blending, again, I'm, it's a little early for me to put out a specific map. I'm just going to show you the probabilities. But if I'm going to show you totals, I'm going to show you what the blend of all the guidance is. So this is the what we call the national blend of models. This is through Sunday morning. We'll go into Sunday afternoon, Sunday night into Monday morning. And again, the, what you're looking at here is a model blend. So it can be biased by one model um, if it's a huge outlier. So the GFS is tugging on this a little bit. But you get the idea that at least all of the guidance agrees some form of light snow could fall east of the mountains. But look at the totals. Most everything is less than an inch and in most cases less than a half an inch. So if you count for melting and mixing here, you're probably talking tenth, two tenths inch. So I showed the probability chart on my Facebook page earlier. I really think that dusting, which is just snow to a half an inch, is probably the highest probability of what we're going to see. I mean, overall, the probabilities are really, really low. But if you want to look at probabilities, we can at least start to see some into the start of the weekend. So I am a huge fan of probabilities because it's really the way to look at it. It may not get tons of clicks, but it's actually the way to actually forecast. There's no deterministic way, which is a specific number to give you. There's always a range. So this is the probability of seeing one inch of snow from the European model. I can show you this. We'll go through Sunday and we'll stop this Monday morning um, at 7 a.m. You see the chances of one inch of snow. 
Not too high west, but from around Charlotte, it's like 5%. And then you get out in here, it starts jumping up a little bit. And I'll scroll to the bottom of the screen just so you can see what these numbers mean. You'll see the legend right below me, right down in here. So the blue is 10 to 20%. The, the kind of lighter shade of blue is 20 to 30. When you start seeing greens and yellows, that's in the 30 to 50% range. So for Charlotte, the chances are like 10 to 20% that we're going to see an inch of snow. Overall, the probabilities are pretty low for huge amounts. I mean, two inches is like the high end right now. The low end is zero, but the mean is right around a half an inch or so. So that's that's the, the European model, which everybody's freaking out about. Let's show you the GFS model. Okay, same product, probability of one inch of snow through Monday morning. It's a little bit more robust closer to Charlotte. It's more 30 to 40 percent, but you kind of see the idea. It really is more east of us than over the Charlotte area. So for folks in eastern North Carolina, central North Carolina, Fayetteville, the Raleigh, probably a little better chance than here in Charlotte to Hickory to Greensboro. Um, but that can kind of give you a good idea. Now, the, the Weather Service puts out a really good map showing their idea of probability of, of measurable snow. I can show you that as well. But right now, nothing shows a big storm, right? If, if, if we're going to get a big storm, the probabilities of getting an inch would be like 70, 80 percent. Right now, they're all less than 50 percent, in most cases less than 40 or 30 percent. So let me show you those probabilities, at least through Sunday, for measurable snow. So Again, this product only goes through Sunday morning, 7 a.m., so the beginning of the event, but it shows you the chance of measurable snow. Remember, measurable snow is only a tenth of an inch. That's a tiny amount of snow, but that's the lowest measurement of snow. Anything less than that would be considered a trace. If we zoom in on some of these areas, the, the light shade of blue is roughly 20%. The darker shades start going to 30 and 40 and 50%. So you could see from the Piedmont of the Carolinas back into Georgia, Alabama, even Mississippi, there are some, you know, some 20, 30, 40% probabilities popping up in a few spots like Montgomery, Alabama. If we show you there, there's a 42% chance of measurable snow. But when you come up to Charlotte, right? And again, this is only through Sunday morning. Um, there's only a 24% chance of measurable snow through then. And again, the high end is about a half an inch. So the totals aren't crazy high right now. And that's why I say we probably need to slow our roll on a big storm, but really just focus on, hey, there could be a chance of snow. Remember too, folks, this is going to be on a Sunday. Um, not a lot going on, not huge impact. During the daylight hours, temperatures should be above freezing. So the road should be fine. Even if it does snow, it does not look to be a significant impact on the roads unless you're up um, early Sunday and by then the snow's not here. Probably a refreeze Sunday night into Monday morning at worst. But again, there's no school on Monday. A lot of things are closed. So impacts overall will probably be low. More to come from this over the next 24 hours, but I wanted to give you a quick update on what I'm thinking right now. And as I mentioned, the snow meter currently sits at a three for a legit chance of snow.